So welcome. So do we ever take a moment to look up on our lives to reflect on what we've achieved and to reconsider our aim for the future? Well, most of us get swallowed in our hectic and ruthless lives within the inevitability of making choices or meeting expectations. In our constrained lives, we're often confronted with difficult choices among which we make decisions. So as Doris said, a dilemma is a situation in which a difficult decision has to be made between two or more alternatives, especially ones that are equally undesirable. Well, dilemmas can be sometimes exhausting and even counterproductive. We may be faced with our self-repressions in an external conflict, in our own primitive longings, urges, and maybe obligations, let's say. Well, apart from these, some dilemmas can also boost us to procure things, make us more adequate and effective human beings. The probability of ending up with an undesired outcome can encourage us in the way of obtaining as many positive things as we can get out of these situations. So I would like to take up the concept of dilemma in this context and tell you my story, including some interesting memories here in. So I faced my first dilemma when I was just about five years old. Here's a display of my choices. You please try to guess which one I had chosen back then. <laughs> well, of course, the one with me playing the piano. So I was at kindergarten taking piano lessons regularly. My teacher has suggested to me to apply for the conservatory entrance exams. Subsequently, I had begun with the necessary preparation. By that time, I had known how to write and read, but I could read notes. Moreover, I could commit them to paper and dictate structures. That summer, without going on any vacation, I continued my preparation for the entrance exams, and eventually, I was accepted. So depending upon my dilemma, I needed to sacrifice from one of the pictures here in order to save more time for my choice. This would mean that I, as a child, would either turn my rejoicing friends away and don't play with them, or wouldn't work for the thing that I was really fond of. So this could either result in a psychologically unfavorable outcome for me, let's say, as a child, or it would be kind of like a rejection against the thing that I love doing the most, which wouldn't then enable me to walk on the path I do today. When I was at the age of seven, I got to confirm my second dilemma. And this one, it wasn't like the first one, which was related to a social aspect, but my education. Mandatorily, I was going to school while also knuckling down to the work at the conservatory. With the school enrollment, I learned how to write and read. By simultaneously, I was discovering the interesting, vivid, and infinite colors of notes. My discoveries inflamed my curiosity and fondness for music even more. My dilemma was that I would either take up an academic education, and therefore would not be able to follow my passion in wake, or would start a full-time music education, which could then turn out for me to be deprived of significant academic and linguistic skills, and maybe even not exist in the 21st century. Therefore, I signed up for the part-time conservatory whilst I was going to a middle school. As the time went by, my first dilemma, the ball piano one, gradually comprised basketball, kayaking, like such activities that I actually loved in the past. However, I chose to stick with my most beloved notes and always went back to practice by turning away the friends, knocking on the door and stuff. We were sometimes playing in parks, but these gatherings <laughs> were not so often. <laughs> Consequently, as I liked school and in order to get more time for myself to practice the piano, I listened to the lectures attentively and learned the core information during the courses, which caused me not to do any additional revision back then. When I got home, I would just practice the piano and then do homework if any were assigned without any confusion or helplessness. Many preparations of concerts and auditions came across me as dilemmas too. So I'd had the indecisiveness and the dilemma related to my education until the audition that was held together by Istanbul Culture and Art Foundation in 2014. In this audition, I tried my best to win it, about which I had later on learned that I was the youngest contestant participating. The day I learned that I was the winner of these auditions, the indescribable joy and elation inside me put an end to the dilemma. 
Yes, I should have been a pianist and work harder. With this triumph, I was granted the opportunity to perform my first orchestra concert in my life within the uh, 42nd Istanbul Music Festival. And in that concert, I brought forth the really successful performance and when the conductor of the orchestra had come to backstage to hug me afterwards, it was clear to me that I had made the right decision. I was even more motivated after that concert, practicing with great care and effort. Shortly after, I received important and great news. I was chosen to share the same stage with the mighty pianist Long Long. We were to perform in front of 3,000 people, one after the other. So, I mean, how can I describe it? Like, every second of the concert was dreamlike. I mean, it was just incredible for me. And at the same time, I was also the first Turkish citizen to have been ever chosen to attend the Allianz Junior Music Camp, which was held by Long Long International Music Foundation. By the time I was a fan of Long Long, already had watched his videos on YouTube and listened to his various CDs. So in 2014, sharing the same stage with my idol got my desire, wish into an effervescent and passionate ambition, although I was just 11 by then. Yes, my dilemma came to a definite end and I would work harder to make it to the top. Thereafter, I went to Barcelona where I had a fantastic time with 12 other participants coming all over the globe. There I saw that making music was the global and collective language that had the potency of connecting all of us in the world. I also experienced that making music together with other people was incredibly fascinating. There, I also had the opportunity to have met with my current teacher, who is Wolfram schmidt during the sessions in Spain. So it was a marvelous week for me. In the following months, I got to perform the 23rd Piano Concert of Mozart with Boris and Istanbul Harmonic Orchestra under the band of Zasha Götze. With the help of the invaluable orchestra members, I got to have an unforgettable and incredible experience with them. So, you know, after every single concert, I was reflecting upon gaining experience, also continuing my music education with my normal school. In 2015, Allianz Turkey started to support my music education, which resulted in my accelerated and intensified motivation. In 2015, in April, by winning the auditions of Istanbul State Symphony Orchestra, I got to play the concert in Mozart. And in April 2016, by getting selected in the auditions of Izmir State Symphony Orchestra, I was granted the opportunity to perform Mendelssohn's first piano concerto. All of these attainments were keeping me on my way determined and strengthening my bond to the thing that I love the most. So in 2017, I confronted another big dilemma. I was going to 8th grade, and that's like the time when one in Turkey experiences a changeover in an educational aspect. So my friends were working really hard for the entrance exams, the gymnasium entrance exams, by having private sessions outside, outside of school and stuff. Well, I liked school and was bringing forth the necessary hard work, but couldn't do any additional preparation. My dilemma was that I would either not study for this important exam and put my own future deliberately at risk, or which is had for this exam, then not allocating the required time for music. This would be a deterioration and subsequently a self-effacement for myself from this industry, music industry. So here's what happened. By winning the auditions of It's So Again, I got to perform the 12th piano concerto of Mozart under the baton of Howard Griffiths just two days before this exam. That year, I finished my school with a degree and still received an outstanding grade in this exam. So I kept both of my responsibilities at high levels. Thus, I had to arrange my timing accordingly. For music, I spent most of my time and for the exam, I listened to the lectures attentively and did all of the assigned homework. In this way, I attained success in both of my pursuits. So I really wanted to continue my music education abroad. In this context, I also faced another big dilemma. 
So my teacher has suggested to me to apply for a music university that is located in Germany. Well, as you can guess, my dilemma was actually about going there or not. If I had stayed in my motherland where I was born and where I was accustomed to, then I wouldn't have gotten the qualifications that I needed and the real education, you know? But if I went abroad, then would I miss my family and my friends, I asked myself? Well, the answer to this dilemma is that I applied for the division of pre-college of that university and scored there the highest amount of points. So the ad ad advantages that the education would bring me certainly outweighed other components. So making my decision at that point was actually easy, I could say. As a musician, I've been playing the piano for 10 years and also going to school at the same time for 10 years. I momentarily study at the ALF Gymnasium and also at the Staatliche Hochschule für Musik und Darstellende Kunst in Mannheim in the division of pre-college. Being the first runner at my school, I get to balance my music life with my school life. So we're given lots and lots and lots of assignments and projects at school and I must complete them in a restricted amount of time. But at the same time, I have a music career going on, which means I have to give my wholehearted effort to it. So I must study for school to get good grades, completing everything with the best quality that I can bring forth. But simultaneously, I have to practice the piano, which means that I could improve in a way of a world-class soloist and reach my dreams. In the absence of these two situations, I get to be confronted with likely negative effects, which would directly affect my future. So you know at high school all the dates and meetings get more often and serious, all socializations wrench out and get more importance among the students. Well, it's not really how it works for me. If I went out to meet my friends, then I wouldn't have practiced for the piano, well maybe in the second priority for school, but which would mean that I would deliberately obscure myself in the way of forging my own life. Or, but if I didn't go out and meet my friends, then I would probably miss what's going on out there. You all know what adolescence is like, I mean. But piano, generally music, is such an occupation that requires such meticulous and tremendous effort to be great at. So for music's sakes, I think all the sacrifices can be worth making. As you see, my dilemmas occur due to the undesirable and negative effects of situations, especially in their absence. But these dilemmas make me stronger, evolve my capacity, and am ameliorate my skills. I like keeping all of my pursuits at high levels, and this makes me perfectionist and ambitious. Also, the likelihood of me being confronted with these negative choices, like effects, turn out to be new and interesting challenges for me every single day. Therefore, I get to be a better and a more adequate person. I am Kambaisal. Thank you so much for your attention.